Welcome, dear friends. I have nothing to uh, say or to report to you, but there are so many people asking me for a <coughs> private interview, and uh, due to uh, extremely uh, time constraints, I could not receive <coughs> all the uh, journalists individually, so I thought this morning, half an hour, uh, I should be uh, available to you, so whatever you would like to ask, I am here. Thank you. <coughs> yes. Hi, I'm Ben Shepard from the AFP News Agency. <coughs> I was wondering whether you could tell us a little bit about the detail and the atmosphere from yesterday afternoon. Yesterday afternoon, it was uh, uh, rather very uh, 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 emotionally charged and uh, a uh, very uh, uh, active and uh, uh, powerful atmosphere, and uh, all the uh, um, uh, subgroups were discussing uh, on a wide range of um, matters uh, very uh, seriously, and I think uh, uh, this is uh, one of the most uh, uh, fruitful uh, gatherings where everybody could uh, concentrate on the uh, basic issue of the uh, Tibet cause. Yes. So I'll ask a follow-up then. Um, you, you said it was emotionally charged. Perhaps you could um, give us some more details on that. Were there um, passions on, on, on show? <laughs> emotionally charged means that uh, the recent happenings inside Tibet since March this year, and uh, then uh, unsuccessful uh, uh, seventh and eighth round of talks with a uh, um, uh, with a PRC, then everybody uh, a kind of uh, mixed feeling, um, frustration, uh, hope, and uh, determination to do something but not very clear what to do. <laughs> so these are the mixed kind of uh, emotion. <coughs> yes. Sir, I'm, I'm Ashok Sharma from AP. Sir, are there any indications from China that it is willing to consider uh, to allow His Holiness to return to Tibet? If so, if that be the case, what will be the attitude of uh, your government? No indication whatsoever from PRC. Suppose there is a proposal, uh, what would be your government's uh, attitude? Three years before, His Holiness has uh, proposed that uh, his uh, pilgrimage to uh, uh, the holy places in China, and uh, he also expressed his willingness to uh, make a short trip to uh, Tibet. And at that time, the PRC authorities' uh, uh, response was uh, very uh, negative. And thereafter, we have never proposed it again. So if China proposed such a um, thing, I don't, um, um, I think uh, there's uh, uh, ways to consider it positively. You will consider it positively? Yes, yes. Of course, they need uh, so many uh, Conditions, but uh, what are those conditions, sir? Of course, then if His Holiness goes to uh, Tibet, he cannot be a uh, uh, just a, a kind of uh, conducted tour as the uh, foreign dignitaries or foreign uh, journalists used to uh, take by the PRC uh, in Tibet or in China. Uh, that kind of visit will uh, have no um, use. There must be certain degree of freedom, and uh, His Holiness could. Uh, uh, meet the people, and the people could uh, have His Holiness uh, darshan and so on and so forth. <coughs> I think yesterday the chairman of parliament told us that you had done um, like like an opinion poll. You, you had sort of contacted the people in Tibet on, on this issue uh, that's going to be discussed uh, here. And um, I think the result was that uh, um, out of the 17,000 that you had contacted about 8,000 said that um, they would follow the, the, his audience's decision. Uh, 
Was that result a surprise to you? Or was it something you expected? No. Why should we be surprised? We know that 99% um, of the people living inside Tibet has uh, unshakable faith uh, in uh, His Holiness the Dalai Lama, which includes the uh, party cadres and uh, the officials who are working within the uh, uh, PRC framework, yet they have a great faith in His Holiness. And uh, it, it was an uh, expected uh, response, not any surprise. Mm. Was it not, not a low figure? Like <coughs> about half? No, it is not low figure. I don't know what kind of information you have got. The general response, either some of them support the middle way approach, and uh, many of them have said that we shall uh, follow whatever His Holiness may decide. And uh, the third kind of people says, we must uh, re uh, our support to His Holiness. And by this way, more than 90%, 94-95%, they are talking in a different way, but the, um, uh, the, the basic thing is uh, re-opposing their faith in His Holiness. So this is not a, a low category. Yes? In that uh, same questionnaire, the, there were 5,000 people that thought uh, that the government needed to take a new approach, meaning possibly abandon the middle way approach. Um, 2,000 wanted to stay with middle way. If that call for abandoning the middle way approach and, and going for a full independence approach, uh, if there's a strong call for that coming out of this meeting, would the Kasha implement that as a new government policy? We are sincerely committed to a, a genuine democratic system. And uh, democracy means to respect the public opinion. And uh, it, if the majority people of some different way, then the uh, present situation, of course, we will gladly uh, follow that. Yes. To examine the free motion films. Um, so, would you then agree that we are not only at a historical moment, that it's not only an historical moment for the Tibetans and Tibetan movement, but perhaps um, also uh, a, a potential uh, turning point uh, here for Tibetans and the Tibetan movement? That uh, only can be uh, said after the uh, conference is concluded and uh, their recommendations are finalized, which may uh, become a turning point, point or which may be a re strengthening the status quo. So it is too early to uh, make any uh, judgment. <coughs> Sir, in view of what happened at the last round of talks with China, so one can't foresee uh, the ninth round uh, happening uh, in, in the, in the <coughs> near future? Uh, as far as uh, we are concerned, we are absolutely open to uh, continue the dialogue. And uh, we have no intention to uh, uh, block it uh, somewhere. Uh, but it is entirely the board is now in their court, and we have submitted our uh, uh, comprehensive memorandum to them. And uh, if they're willing to uh, discuss on that further, of course we are. Uh, very much ready. Uh, if they are not uh, ready to discuss on this, then we cannot uh, uh, force them to come to a negotiation table. So I think that's all. Yes. In this, this is Gigi Press Tokyo, Dean Sankar Singh is my name. Uh -huh. Have any foreign governments wished you well in this meeting? any kind of messages that you have received, including the government of India? Uh, I don't think this need to be uh, made public. There are so many well-wishers and uh, many um, uh, helping governments are watching very closely to this meeting. I can say only that.
up with a set list of recommendations? What's expected from the committee? We do not have any expectation. They are absolutely free to discuss anything uh, under the sun. And whatever they would like to make a recommendation, uh, they are welcome to do. So there is no instruction to any uh, committee. The committee is uh, choosing the chairperson or the uh, secretaries by themselves. And uh, I heard uh, last evening that most of the committees are conducting a different way. Uh, so they are not uniformity uh, among the committees. So excuse me, uh, should I understand the upcoming result of the meeting is the recommendation to the parliament as a procedure? Uh, I think so. Mm. And the, parliament the, the parliament is uh, conducting this conference okay. and the uh, uh, honorable speaker and deputy speaker is the panel authority how to uh, conduct uh, the recommendations. Um, um, I think uh, naturally the recommendations will go to the uh, parliament. Okay. So that means the parliament will discuss the, uh, uh, the final result in right. the next session. Right. Next session means uh, next March. March. Or they may hold a special session that is also possible according to the charter. I see. Hmm. March section is uh, a regular session which is meant for budget oh, okay. and, uh, and they may discuss during the budget session or they may uh, think it urgent they may call a special session just after this I conference see, possibly you have a special session. yes possibilities yes, are there yes. yeah if needed mm. sir, sir, just to get clarification if, if this if the committees recommend that uh, the, the the government in exile should go for independence, then there is no problem uh, as far as your administration is concerned in, in switching over to the other option. As I mentioned before, we are totally following the democratic principles. And in the demo democratic principles, the people's opinion is the supreme. And uh, after this meeting, then of course the parliament shall have to be make a decision the parliament by majority or by unanimous make a decision we should go for independence, then of course there's no way to escape that. The parliament has the final uh, decision making power. Yes. Um, I know you addressed it yesterday in your speech, but would it be possible just to summarize uh, briefly once again or once more why this call uh, came from astronomers at this point, uh, why this meeting has been called? That is, um, uh, 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 in detail, uh, I have made my statement, and uh, you can have the copy of uh, yesterday's statement. And uh, uh, actually, after the sixth round of talk, uh, we are feeling a kind of frustration, and uh, we didn't have a plan to uh, make a uh, continuing the talks during the uh, uh, year 2008 before the Olympic. But things are turned in different way and uh, we are forced to have the uh, informal consultation in the month of May and then seventh round, round of talk in the month of June. And uh, then that uh, proceeds to the uh, eighth round of talk in the month of uh, early November. So during the Olympic period, it was not uh, advisable to have a such kind of meeting. It might be uh, considered as a pressure practice. And then after the Olympics are over, uh, this was the uh, earliest possible time to have a such meeting. So in detail, I'll give you the copy of my yesterday's speech. The potential uh, positive impact has already been uh, uh, visible. Number one, the Tibetan community all over the world has opportunity to uh, meet together and discuss on the serious issues of the uh, Tibet course. And uh, they have uh, 
uh, time to uh, a kind of brainstorming and exercising to uh, revisit the present situation and think for the future. And uh, this process itself is uh, very energizing the people. And now a large number of people are turned here and they are discussing uh, very seriously and uh, it will definitely uh, uh, result some kind of uh, positive uh, recommendation not only uh, on the policy matters, even the um, uh, methods and uh, the uh, uh, way of conducting, and I think there are so many positive results will come out. Yes. Uh, I'm from the uh, McClatchy newspapers in the United States. Mm -hmm. uh, I would like to ask you a, a broader question about uh, some of your experiences over the last 10 years, the difficulty of bringing democracy to the exile community. Uh, Tibetans, by their by your nature, are, are very, um, I don't know how to say it, perhaps subservient to the wishes of the Dalai Lama, very not inclined to express themselves. Can you reflect on that a bit about how that that process has, has evolved to really get them to express themselves fully? <coughs> There are two points to be considered. Number one, democracy does not mean there must be uh, different opinions. <coughs> and uh, in that way, then there cannot be a unanimous, <coughs> unanimity decision. <coughs> the really highest level of democracy is uh, uh, agreement of all the people. That means uh, the people are equally participating and making a decision without any dissension. <coughs> so in this matter, if the uh, entirety of Tibetan people agree with the Dalai Lama, I don't think this is not an uh, anti-democracy. It is a, a very positive way of democracy. And secondly, it is not true that the people are not able to express their uh, dissent opinions, their different opinions, People are very much outspoken, and uh, even yesterday I have made this uh, explicit uh, uh, statement that there are large number of different opinions. They are expressing in the media and in the public, but they are not able to get a official uh, platform. And uh, this conference is uh, one of the objective of this conference is to give to those different opinions and different voices should have an official channel or platform. So we are very much respecting that there are a lot of different voices. It is not that uh, everybody endorses the Dalai Lama's uh, opinions. Could I follow up on that question? Um, my question then is, uh, I hesitate to bring this up, but in a post-Dalai Lama period, what do you foresee? We are functioning, as I mentioned repeatedly, democratic way. And the post the Lama period, our charter provides that there will be a democratically elected council of regents. And that council of regents will look after the functions and responsibilities at this moment uh, invested in the institution of Dalai Lama will be taken over by the Council of Regents and there will be no vacuum, there will be no breakdown. And uh, it, it will uh, have no difference. One of the basic purposes of democratization is uh, have the administration continuity and uh, it will have according to the Charter. Is it Council of? Regents. Regents. Yeah. Three member Council of Regents. The question was very simple. The recent development inside Tibet, the international scenario, and the PRC leadership behavior, keeping these things in consideration, what the Tibetans should do in the future. This was the, 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 the essence of the question. And to that, 
the people inside Tibet responded in uh, so many different ways. Um, Rinpoche, was it put in, in sort of an essay form, or was it sort of A, follow the wishes of His Holiness the Dalai Lama, B, uh, Rangsan? No, no, that? no. As I mentioned before, keeping the three facts, the reality, ground realities, in consideration, what should we do in the future? This was the question. Then there was nothing else. And the people can uh, respond it in a C way or respond in a different way because the most of these uh, answers are coming through telephonic composition. There's not much uh, long statements. It was short statement. Mm. There is uh, no um, free flow of information in from inside Tibet as yet. There's a lot of restriction. And I think the recent visitors of outside is uh, the journalists and the uh, parliament members from uh, Australia. And uh, then uh, at this moment, I do not have any information, but the Norwegian uh, parliamentary group is uh, visiting uh, last week. and. Uh, if you uh, look into the reports of the uh, Australian journalist coming uh, back, the uh, repressive measures uh, are so high that each five-minute work you will find uh, armed military uh, uh, personnel, and no one are able to talk to each other, and uh, everybody was uh, living under fear. So great restriction is still there. And I think uh, the repressive measures uh, taken during the Olympic has not been uh, much lessened at this moment. Yes. So, with regard to what the statement you made, uh, the latest reports from Beijing say that a lot of people are being thrown out and taken off the streets, and uh, uh, the pressures increased, and even on the Indian side of the borders, the uh, security has increased. Uh, what is your response to that? I have no response. This is a fact. The security measures and the military concentrations are very much increased. This, these informations are coming. Now a response should come from the concerned nations or concerned governments. In the recent past, several times the Dalai Lama has spoken of his semi-retirement position, probably retiring position as well. So what do we take of this kind of statements from the Lai Lama, what is your response to this? Since the uh, amendment of charter and uh, make the uh, political leadership is to be elected directly by the uh, Tibetan people, uh, the responsibilities of His Holiness has been lessened. Uh, some his responsibilities have been taken by the elected political leadership. And on that basis, he was uh, jokingly saying that I am semi-retirement. But according to the present charter, the Dalai Lama cannot retire. There is no provision of retirement. He can appoint, uh, he can ask the parliament to appoint um, council of regents, even his uh, lifetime, if he wanted to uh, 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 to uh, free himself from the uh, constitutional responsibilities. Otherwise, uh, the His Holiness will uh, remain uh, as the uh, supreme leader of the uh, Tibetan community. Are you, by the way, preparing for the next Dalai Lama? It is too early to uh, prepare. His Holiness has a robust health and uh, he will still have a uh, very active life at least for another 15 years and uh, we need not worry at this moment. By the way, His Holiness has uh, made uh, very clear uh, decisions to avoid any kind of vacuum. So uh, I should say we are 
already prepared for any kind of uh, eventualities. Yes? Um, you know, the press keeps coming back to this point of His Holiness retiring. Could you please speak a little bit about the dual role of the Dalai Lama as head of state and also as religious head of the Tibetan people? Uh, because as I understand it, he wouldn't be retiring as, as spiritual head of the Tibetan people, only as political is what he's talking about. Is that correct? Yes, that's very true. His Holiness has a dual functions as a, a religious uh, supreme head and also the head of state and head of government. So what I'm explaining to uh, our dear friend is about his uh, political responsibilities. Since the uh, elected political leaders were there, his responsibilities are lessened. And uh, there cannot be any elected uh, religious leadership. Uh, it is uh, out of question and uh, his responsibilities are already there. There's no question of retirement in, in that sphere. <coughs> In that context, um, and I hope I'm saying this right, but is it true that His Holiness has, in the past, or recent past, um, mentioned the uh, option of uh, Maya Tulku, where is, am I saying this right, Maya? Maya, Maya Tulku? Monday, Monday Tulku. Yeah, sorry. Monday Tulku, yeah. yeah mm -hmm. is, that, is it true that he had talked about that? Oh, yes, um, yes. He had he discussed it at a length. If uh, option of Monday Tulku is uh, chosen as the final decision, then uh, the present Dalai Lama, without, with, before uh, um, his um, uh, passing away, he will choose the next Dalai Lama as his uh, uh, reincarnation, which is uh, reincarnated during his uh, lifetime. And then there will be no uh, uh, time gap. And uh, when the, that Monday Tulku uh, would be uh, grown uh, considerably uh, when uh, the present Dalai Lama passes away. So this is the concept of Monday Tulku. Yes. What do you know about the situation of the two Panchen Lamas, the one that's disappeared? Uh, is there any knowledge of what became of him, where he might be living, what his health is, what kind of education he's receiving. And, of course, the, the follow-up question would be, it, it seems possible that there would be a very confusing situation eventually with the Dalai Lama as well. How do you see that happening if there's another Beijing kick to the Dalai Lama? We are very much concerned for both the uh, real Panchen Lama, who was uh, recognized by His Holiness, and uh, the other uh, Panchen Lama, who was recognized by the state, the PRC. Both, we don't have any information. Where about? What about their uh, welfare? What about their health condition? We have absolutely no information. The uh, real Panchen Lama, recognized by His Holiness, was unknown for uh, several years, for the last 10-15 uh, years. But the Panchen Lama, uh, recognized, uh, appointed by the state, is also now not in the public. And there's, uh, we are not able to hear anything about him. But it will not happen with Dalai Lama because Dalai Lama is in a free country and uh, uh, his uh, reincarnation, re the time comes, will also be choosing in the, uh, in the free country. Yes. Uh, in the press conference that the Chinese made on 10th November, they said that everything the exiles were asking for was, was disguised with independence, with some form of independence. What is your response to that? <laughs> what I can respond to that. We have uh, given them in writing what we are wanted. And uh, in our memorandum, each point is being supported by the provisions of the Constitution or the autonomy law. 
and the constitution is not ours, that is PRC's constitution. The law is not made by us, it is made by the PRC. Even asking certain things within the provisions of the constitution and the law, they are being disguised independence, then what we can do? And that means whatever law or whatever constitution they are followed has a provision to uh, make a certain independence disguise, then that is not our fault. They need to uh, uh, alter the constitution. <coughs> Why do you think they altered the constitution? Because uh, when the envoys went earlier, they had asked for your, you know, your recommendations. Yes. And then this time they kind of turned them down. So what do you think is the reason for this change? That uh, we shall, uh, you shall have to ask the uh, PRC authorities why they have turned. Because uh, in our memorandum, we do not, uh, uh, we have not speaking a single word which doesn't have a constitutional provision or the law's provision. So then what is the uh, uh, matter? They think about it is uh, independence in disguise. I think whatever the uh, uh, his holiness does or uh, says, or whatever the Esser government does or says, that always uh, become a kind of uh, independence. I think that is uh, their fear and their suspicion. And uh, uh, this fear comes uh, out of uh, their guilt feeling because they do not have legitimacy for themselves. And uh, due to lack of legit legitimacy, uh, they have a great uh, fear, and due to that fear, uh, whatever we say, they think there is an uh, independence disguise. Otherwise, I can't find any reason. Thank you very much. Uh, yes. uh, my name is Tenzi Atena. Uh, I work for Rajiv News. Um, yesterday, we, uh, uh, the speaker said that uh, we were consulted with uh, veterans inside Tibet, and that the majority of them, 8,000 of the 17,000, said that uh, they, say they would uh, follow anything that the Dalai Lama decide for the future of uh, Tibetan movement. So, and I'm, and uh, the Tibetan people earlier have also said that whatever the Dalai Lama decides would be, you know, a solution that they would accept. So, I'm wondering if in this uh, particular like meet, if uh, what would be the uh, would you say outcome if all of them say that uh, the Dalai Lama's what you say um, means or whatever movement that he wants should uh, be the way forward. That is, their, that is their freedom. I cannot curtail anybody's uh, freedom of thinking or freedom of expression. As I repeatedly say, we are totally committed to a genuine democratic system. In the genuine democratic system, nobody can influence or nobody can impose any idea. If a majority of Tibetan people says, we will follow whatever decide His Holiness. That is public opinion. I can't deny that. I can't say that is improper. Because the real public opinion means the people's own independent thinking. And in the today, multi-party democratic system, the people's mind has been influenced by the uh, converse or by the indoctrination of the uh, uh, various parties. And uh, fortunately, we are partyless, and therefore, uh, our public opinion is a real public opinion. Whatever the majority people think, we shall have to respect that. And uh, the uh, Central Tibet administration have no intention uh, to uh, to influence the uh, public opinion or to say that this opinion is not uh, good or this opinion is uh, bad. Whatever opinion comes, we shall respect to that. And majority says that His Holiness, whatever His Holiness decides, uh, that will be good for. It's okay. It is probably could be most uh, uh, reasonable. We shall have to respect to that. Thank you very much. If, if, if the conclusion of this present meeting going on is to seek freedom, uh, uh, to seek um, independence, independence for today, mm. and that is endorsed by Parliament, mm. uh, don't you think? Would, do you think that that will cause Mm, like friction problems with the Indian government. Why should think everything just now? If this decision comes, then let us see what are problems with the Indian government or uh, with any kind of government.
So it is too early to uh, talk about. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody.